it's always funny because a great player. Oh, they're going to call a foul on Rodman in the transition game. Well, not a foul, excuse me. Now they do uh, indicate a foul call. Foul is on it is on Rodman. And a timeout is taken with 8.29. a charge on Kemp. Well, Dennis Rodman saw that one coming from about 30 feet away, and he couldn't believe it. Sean Kemp just kept coming and coming and coming. He was standing there waiting forever. The offensive charge. Another turnover. Go was hit with a technical foul for what is termed unsportsmanlike conduct. <laughs> Well, M Michael, I, mean, I should say Dennis Rodman giving the two-hand disgusted wave towards referee Steve Javi. And that is automatic. We saw it in game one with uh, Joe Crawford. As soon as you put those two hands up and wave in that fashion, you don't even have to say anything. That's an automatic technical. And Dennis is trying to explain to Coach Phil Jackson, I didn't do anything, Coach. Absolutely nothing. There's no way you can show up the referee. Double. It's on Kemp. And Rodman. And Rodman getting a break there. And Sean Kemp can't believe anything was called against him. He was just boxing out, a push and a shove from Dennis Rodman. And very quickly, Michael Jordan got right in the face of Dennis Rodman and told him, cool it right now. You've already got the one technical, and this was very close here. On the weak side, Rodman and Kemp battling for position. And you see there, Rodman, clearly the instigator. Kemp just trying to hold his arm up and box out Rodman. And now Sean Kemp has two fouls, but he was not involved in that play at all. And he has to go to the bench. Next to this particular ball club. Luke Longley with a nice move as uh, Rodman and Burkowski became entangled. Luke Longley with a terrific start. Five of eight from the field. Ten points. Series. Here, Dennis Rodman and Burkowski getting all tangled up. And Dennis, with a flop there, just taking the little bump from Burkowski. Michael Jordan. Frank Burkowski involved, picking up his third person. And Burkowski and Rodman having some uh, extracurricular talk there. Michael Jordan once again, quickly getting over to Rodman and pulling him away. Burkowski, if you can get somebody involved, do it. Sean Kemp, you have to start getting physically involved in this ball game. 7 0. The player one on one going to your left with a fadeaway jumper. And here's a fadeaway jumper by Rodman. Start of the third quarter, challenging every pass, every shot. And here's Sean Kemp popping Rodman in the chest. And as they get all tangled up, something could have been called there of a foul nature, but the official wisely called the three second violation. He should be happy with that call. Well, Dennis Rodman has to be very careful. This is where he usually has his problems. When they're way up, the game is not in the balance. And on Kerr. And Kerr on the loose ball. Foul is called on Payton. Steve Kerr was not a factor in the first two games in Chicago. Gary Payton gets called for this foul here on Dennis Rodman just holds him, keeps him from coming up the lane, and then says, well, who, me? I didn't foul him. And a technical foul has been called. It's on Peyton, who apparently had something else to say in the direction of Steve Javi. He's not in there right now. And this call away from the ball. Robert that's four. Uh, Dennis Robin, uh, who plays very tough, low post defense, and has that habit of snapping that neck back. Nobody ever hits him in the face when he does that. That was not a defensive foul on Dennis Robin. And another one on Dennis Robin. And that's five. Longley walking over to the scorer's table. He will come on for Rodman. 
Rodman and Kemp underneath the basket. Hard to see where that foul is on Dennis Rodman. Sean Kemp initiated everything. This points out the, the, you know, the problem that Ron Harper not be professional. And Jordan fouled by Hawkins. And Rodman and Krakowski getting involved. And Phil Jackson at the other end of the floor taking a very long look and now whistling to his team out there. He does not want Dennis to do anything that is not going to have him ready for a game four. You just have your heart in your throat at all times when they get tangled up. And see, Dennis initiates all that by getting his arms tangled up underneath the other player and then makes it appear that in this case, Frank Brokowski <laughs> is doing the holding. If, once again, with the game not in the balance, a 22-point lead. But these, <laughs> these are certainly two of the freest spirits in the NBA. We don't need it any sort of altercation here that would take away from this beautiful exhibition of basketball today by the Chicago Bulls. Now, will this be considered yeah. taunting? I was just going to say, why is that not taunting? Just a look and almost baiting Frank Brokowski to do something. Dennis has to settle down, play basketball, go play golf with the Michael Jordan tomorrow and get ready for game four. But if you can't stand there at attention and look at somebody with a blank expression on your face what are you allowed to do they did lose the one to the Knicks in game three and again uh, Burkowski and Rodman come together and the officials very quick to move to that scene Burkowski with with number four Rodman flashing to the ball no need to to overplay or try to deny him Dennis is not looking to swing that sky hook across the middle uh, Gary Payton doing a lot of trash talking. And Rodman and Brukowski get involved. It looks like Pavetta has given the ejection sign. This has been brewing the last couple of minutes. I think he's thrown both out of the game. Ejected, flagrant foul two. I thought Pavetta indicated that both were tossed. Let's see. Well, this has been brewing ever since these two have gotten on the floor there. As this time, Burkowski does get that forearm and elbow right into the Adam's apple of Dennis Rodman. But uh, George Carl, who was ridiculing Rodman for all the things that he was getting away with, after game one had nothing but praise for Dennis Rodman after game two. I think we're going to hear more ridiculing after this one. Dick Pavetta gave a succession of thumbs, but apparently he was making it clear that it was Bukowski who was gone and uh, Rodman remains. And now he and Kemp are having words. Very difficult for George Carl to ridicule the starting power forward leading rebounder in the series when you're down 3-0. 5.45 remaining in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Phil Jackson should do, do this game a favor and maybe take Rodman out. Rodman and Kemp coming together. And Kemp picks up number five. On the other hand, Phil Jackson may be enjoying the fact that uh, Dennis Rodman has gotten into the heads of the Seattle players. And uh, Michael Jordan just came over, <laughs> giving us a look, as if to say, <laughs> he's kind of amused by it, but what's going on here? And uh, Phil Jackson just picking up at the clock again, wishing this thing were then without getting any further incident from Dennis Rodman. Phil Jackson, I'm sure, has already started uh, thinking about Wednesday, and he knows they'll want to have Dennis Rodman on the floor. But Dennis is quick to point out that he has not thrown a punch in 10 years in this league. And I'm sure Phil Jackson will breathe a sigh. Well, uh, for Dennis, certainly a guy who enjoys the circus atmosphere that he has created. But there's no question that uh, he has bothered the Seattle Supersonics along with what has taken place on the scoreboard.